Simon says no talking. <laughs> All right. We're going to do this. So for the sake of time, we're going to try to do this. And again, I do want to apologize for, because we got a little caught behind our time. And one of the things most people know me, especially from the Fellowship and Miracle Revival, know I'm, I learned that from my dad. He had to be on time. If we said we're going to do something, I'd like to be on time with it. So while you eat very silently, because I always think it's always disrespectful when we have a keynote speaking folk you hear in folks clinking on plates so I'm trying to be conscious of that but I do just want to acknowledge our officers from NYPD that are here tonight from Borough my community affairs officers from the 44th precinct are here tonight Bobby Oviedo and Carmen Tejada Detective Carmen Tejada did I say that right Bobby? I was close? alright alright for those that don't know they took me to the cooker what, what they call that? the boxing? the smoker Pat. the smoker the smoker I went to um, to uh, the garden, and uh, Bobby actually won his fight. They actually have grudge matches. You know, the police department have grudge matches. Yeah. And uh, my wife and I was the first ones there. And this is going to get some of the church folk. Amen. Lady Nicole and I was the first one there. We must have got there before the gates opened. And, um, you know, Bobby had the last fight. I didn't realize they had 25 fights. And y'all know First Lady got to get up early in the morning. We didn't get out of the garden until like 1 a.m. So uh, you cost me some money that night, so I just want you to know that because I had to pay her well. But uh, I thank God for our 44th Precinct uh, Community Affairs Officer. I thank God for our own 4-9 Community Affairs Officers. Dave Lepore and our honoree tonight. One of our honorees, Jay Sturdivan. Detective Jay Sturdivan. And he's been tremendous. They've been tremendous in our community, and we're certainly grateful for them. I see our borough officers. I'm asking our boroughs just wave your hand. They're here tonight with us. <laughs> Inspector Griffin, he was our first keynote speaker at our breakfast that we had three years ago, and we thank God for. Amen. 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 <laughs> Inspector, amen. 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 Yeah. From our borough. <laughs> He's here. Also representing Marisol is here tonight representing Scott Stringer, our controller Scott Stringer. And Troy Outlaw is here representing Letitia James tonight. We want to acknowledge them. And all of our community leaders, we have community awards that we're giving out for the first time in our community. Along with, um, we have certificates for our community groups and we have our special presentations for our honorees tonight. Let's give again our MC a hand clap. He's been terrific. Bishop Gordon Reed. Bishop Reed, and um, I just thank God for him. I told him he, he knows how to bring it to order. Mm -hmm. I might, whenever I have an outside affair, I might have to have you come uh, MC it, Bishop. All right, we're grateful tonight. We're grateful tonight. And I'm going to ask Bishop, he's going to, matter of fact, come back. No, I'm going to ask Vanessa. Where's Vanessa? Come on, Vanessa. This is our councilwoman. She's from the, my precinct and uh, our church up in uh, District. 16, all right, I'm about to say 13, 16, and I just want to say, she came last year, actually she filled this, she was our keynote last year, and Vanessa is everywhere, you talk about Rabbi Thompson being everywhere, this young lady, I don't know where she sleeps, but I'm certainly grateful for her, she's been a friend, she's been a little sister to me, and I'm certainly grateful, whenever I call upon her, she's always been there. She now has changed. She was the chairman, the chairperson of our public safety. But recently she got now, I think, in the finance department. So, um, you know, so she handles the money now. But she's going to come greet us. And then it's going to be back into the hands of our bishop that we might proceed with our program. Let's give our councilwoman Vanessa Gibson a hand clap. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here, all of my father's children. It's so great to be here with you once again. I want to thank your president, Pastor Jay Gooding, and to the executive of the entire clergy council of the 4-9 precinct, to all of my colleagues in government who were here, uh, Council Member Andy King, Senator Jamal Bailey, my wonderful and amazing district attorney, Darcel Clark, yeah, yeah. and to everyone who is here, all of the members of the NYPD, distinguished clergy, community residents, Miracle Revival, Fellowship Tabernacle, and everyone. I hope I didn't forget anyone. 
but I am just so honored. This fellowship and this dinner that we continue to gather each and every year is really significant and really important. And at a time when you see all of the things going on in this country, it's really important that we continue to stand together to reaffirm our values, our principles, and make sure that we are one community. We are all in this together. Community, clergy, law enforcement, public servants, all working together. You do not need a title in front of your name to care about your brother and sister, to care about the future of our community, to invest in our children, and to give them the vibrant future that God has already ordained for them. And I am so thankful because Pastor Gooding has so many titles, not just pastor, superintendent. Uh, he is a friend. He's a colleague, a husband, a father. He does so much work. He pastors at two churches. He comes to City Hall to pastor over the city council for me. I mean, he just is just so consistent and so amazing. I thank God for Pastor Gooding. Can we give him one more round of applause? And so while I just have the mic for a brief moment, I just simply want to say thank you. Thank you to the community. Thank you for all that you do, for all that you represent, and all that you stand for. I thank you for not only making a difference, I thank you for being the difference. And our children, our young people need us like never before. We are making incredible impacts on their lives. We are role models. And some of us have so much to give back to this community. And the time is now. And so I appreciate the opportunity to always speak before you. I appreciate the collaboration, the partnership, the fellowship. We are family. And I want to thank our chief of the borough. I want to recognize Assistant Chief Larry Nakunian. Thank you for your leadership, for all that you have done, for always answering all of my phone calls. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And certainly want to recognize our amazing commanding officer of the 4-9 Precinct, Captain Thomas Alves. Thank you so much. And as I leave, I certainly want us to show love for this sister, not only because she has made history, but because of her incredible, incredible legacy and lifetime of public service to this city. Our keynote speaker, our new chief of the Community Affairs Bureau, Chief Nilda Huffman. <laughs> So once again, thank you all for being here. May God bless you and keep you. And please remember that we are all given a purpose in life, a passion to help others, and God gives us the plan. So thank you so much. Thank you, clergy. Thank you, law enforcement. Thank you to the community for all that you do. I look forward to our continued partnership. God bless you all. That was well done, well placed. We thank you so much for being so precise and concise. And also, uh, like our chairperson, I have to say, uh, our, our chairman, he's a walking encyclopedia of who is who. <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed, uh, Pastor. I'm really, really impressed. There is a printed bio of our keynote speaker, which I'd like to read. I'm asked to read that. Uh, but there's also... The fact that someone knows her more than I do and more than we all have in the documentation here. So uh, Lieutenant Keyshawn Hickman, former Special Ops in the 4-9 Precinct, will make a few remarks after I read the bio and then uh, make a few remarks and then uh, formally or informally introduce our chief. But I'm going to read from the printed notes here. Uh, chief of, she's the Chief of Community Affairs and the first Hispanic woman in the NYPD to be promoted to three-star chief. Yeah. Chief Hoffman began her career with the NYPD in October 1987 as a police administrative aide. Three years later, she became a police officer and worked in various commands in the patrol bar in the patrol uh, bar Bronx and the patrol bar and Manhattan North. 
She served as executive commander in the 42nd Precinct and commanding officer in the 25th Precinct and the 52nd Precinct. Prior to her recent promotion, Chief Hoffman was the executive officer of risk management in the Bureau. We are extremely delighted and honored to have her in, in this, our second uh, dinner, to be in this brand new role. So may I now ask Lieutenant Hickman to come, make remarks, and then a round of applause for our new chief as she comes. Lieutenant. Thank you, Bishop. How was the food, everybody? Good? Good. All right, God bless you all. So, yes, uh, for the last four years, I was the special ops lieutenant here. Uh, probably one of the, the, the best places I ever worked, uh, with the exception of the 2 5 precinct. Until now. Until now. Uh, but I, I first met Chief Hoffman at the, uh, at the 25th precinct. She was my commanding officer as a captain. And. Uh, she was the community affairs showcase uh, for the department, even back then. Uh, one of her main proponents over the last 30 years that she's commanded precincts throughout the city uh, and been involved with units throughout the city was being involved with the community and bridging that gap and promoting tonight, which is clergy, cops, and community. Uh, besides that, you know, she's a great lady. And uh, I just want to introduce to you very briefly the first female uh, in the city of New York to achieve the rank of three-star chief, Chief Milda Hoffman. all and thank you for working together in the spirit of grace. Um, I don't know, I was talking to Pastor Gooding and I don't think that he remembers. I was telling him we met 13 years ago and I am so surprised that he invited me back and gave me a microphone. I don't know if you remember. 13 years ago I was um, assigned to community affairs at the borough as a lieutenant. And um, with Rosie Otero, she invited me to come and, well, Pastor Gooding invited me to come to one of his churches on a Sunday to come speak to his congregation. And um, when I got up there, first of all, I didn't realize how huge your congregation was. There was a lot of people there. Gave me the mic, and uh, when I went up there, I froze. So I know Miss Patterson, where is she? So I know how she was feeling, that is a little bit scary. I was up there, and I was scared. And I did not know what to say, and you were so kind enough to come up and help me. And he gave me the mic again. So that is, God is good, God is good, and thank you for giving me a second chance. So, uh, and I am here now. So I am so grateful for him, and you know, there's many people here that I know. Um, I'm a Bronx girl, raised in the Bronx. Bronx, I grew up in, you know, I'm a you know product of the Bronx schools, and um, I'm so grateful to be here and be able to speak here. When um, Pastor Gooding called me and said, you know, could you be the keynote speaker? I said I would totally be honored um, to come back. I mean, the Bronx is my home, and um, it's an incredible journey that I've had right now. The last 21 days, today makes three weeks as the Chief of Community Affairs. Um, you know, super excited. Um, you know, I, I've been working for the last two years at One Police Plaza as the Executive Officer of Risk Management Bureau. And I would run, bun, um, run into Monaghan all the time and I would tell him, you got to send me back to the Bronx. I got to go back to the Bronx. I need to be the XO. And that's all I wanted. I want to be the XO. I want to come back to the Bronx. I would tell him that every time. Every time I took, you know, I, I would see him, I would say, please send me back to the Bronx. He calls me one day into his office um, sometime in December, and I said, you're sending me back to the Bronx. Please tell me. I'm hearing there's a lot of moves going on. You're sending me back to the Bronx. He goes, I got something better. So there is nothing better than the Bronx. I can't believe it. And he goes, what about Chief of Community Affairs? You got me. You, you got me. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> I want to start with congratulating the honorees here today, Shabar. Silvio, Donna, and Jay, thank you for the community service. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, my vision, let me just start with a little, my vision for the new role will, will be to build on the skills and 
cap capabilities that I have gained throughout my career. When interfacing with members of the community, I face the challenge with great anticipation and optimism. Because whereas once had a specific geographic area to do this work, I now have been entrusted to do it throughout the city. I seek to continue to work in all community groups into the fold that they may be oriented with our driving principle of shared responsibility. And the police commissioner talks about that together. And this is one right here. Um, we talk about the three C's, I love it. And um, and you, the clergy's unbelievable partners of the police department. Great things happen when the community and its police operate in tandem towards a unified goal. I will rally behind this cause and promote it in every way possible because coming together leads to the overall satisfaction of our community and that of our membership. It is good to be back in the Bronx. I consider this my home, not just because I grew up here, because I was a newly minted police officer in the, in the 43rd Precinct more than 28 years ago. When I became a police officer, I will always dreamt of the day that I could serve the community I grew up in, as it is true for many police officers. Pastor Gooding has named this evening Bridging the Gap Between Cops, Community, and Clergy. It is my mission to have all three of these groups continue their honest dialogue in an effort to develop a deeper, deeper understanding of the issues that are the obstacle to a healthy relationship. We all know that cops are important. Um, equally as important is our Bronx clergy, is our clergy throughout the city, which is the cornerstone of this healthy community. Our Bronx houses of worship have given people the opportunity to find jobs, explore their faith, experience new ideas, get delved into wonderful stories, all while provide, providing a sense of place for gathering. Um, since it's only been three weeks and I've already been out to many places to address the clergy. And um, you know, one of the main questions that they always ask is what can we do? What can, you know, what can we do as the clergy? And um, there is, and I give the same answer. You, first of all, you guys are doing it. I mean, you guys here in the 4-9, this community council, um, when I went and I spoke in Brooklyn, not a lot of commands have um, a community council. Um, clergy council, and I think that it should be spread throughout the, all the other commands. I think it's important for clergy to be together. I mean, a great example was about you know sharing you know sharing churches. I think how important that is. Um, but opening, you guys open our doors up not only to the cops. Invite officers. Invite you know I know you guys invite the community affairs officers. Invite your new NCOs to address your congregation so they could see the partnership that exists there. And um, you know that's truly important, and, and we appreciate that many of you do that. Um, open the doors up to our youth. Um, have if you have spaces where um, we could have events there for our youth, and um, just even counsel. Many times um, we appreciate, and that was when I was in the Bronx with Pastor Gooding, and many um, relationships that I've had with clergy. You know, many um, people out in the community are very afraid to come and speak to the police. I mean, that's you know, true, that's something that we deal with every day, but they're very comfortable talking to the clergy. And I always, when I was CEOs of commands, I always just say, it doesn't matter, you don't have to give me a name, as long as the information gets to us and we could help, or we could solve that crime, or we could solve that shooting, you know, we don't care where the information came. So, I mean, you guys are, are unbelievable, and we appreciate that partnership that we have. My mission as the Chief of Community Affairs is to continue to build the trust between this community and its police. I seek to make significant gains in this area by demonstrating respect to the people of the city by promoting the idea of transparency and legitimacy. As you are likely aware, um, the police commissioner and um, the Mayor de Basio um, have pushed, you know, they have put out 2,500 body-worn cameras, mm -hmm. and by the end of this year, um, all our patrol officers, 18,000 of them, will have um, will have um, body-worn cameras. This is a project while I was at Risk Management Bureau that um, I was responsible for, and I am totally behind that. Um, it's just not, it, you know, it would be able to see how it increased the level of accountability, but between the interaction of the community and the police. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, I viewed, when, when I was up there, I would view, I think, hours and hours of body-worn camera videos, and it's incredible the wonderful relationship that the police, the great job that the police do every day, but that's not shown on the five o'clock news. We don't see that. And, um, it, it, and it's incredible um, now that, you know, we have that video. We have tons of footage to see all the wonderful work that the cops do, how respectful and wonderful the community is to the police, and we don't see that every day. Um, but now we have video to that. 
to our cops in our room, to the police officers in our room, one, one of our most important tools of communication skill is how we listen to others and speak to others. Listen to your community's needs and problems and questions first, and then let them understand what the police can do to help them. I applaud you for the work that you do, and I stand to by you to continue efforts to engage the members of the community as you go about your day. Um, to the clergy in the room, regardless of the fate, each of you play a key role in connecting us with the community. Regardless of the fate, you operate a safe haven for every community. Your doors are always open, and I want each and every member of, of the worship to know that the NYPD never closes. Like you, we are always open to listen to your problems and help find a solution. So please help us bridge the gap and pull down the walls. This is not a project for the NYPD, this is a lifestyle now. Let's improve what we have each day, whether it's be fighting our, open, um, our, our drugs out there, one person at a time, I mean one incident at a time, or providing tools to our youth who may be experiencing bullying in school. Dialogue alone is just a start. It is now my job to bring healing and hope to each and every community in the city. Um, as most of you know, we, we talked about this earlier, um, the NCO began here January 22nd, um, the Neighborhood Coordination Officer. Um, and let me see, hold on, that's why I wrote notes to, to this time. Um, and we have a video production unit in the Community Affairs Unit, and one of the things that I wanted to emphasize, and, and because it's, you know, um, here, and I guess maybe because Keyshawn picked it. Where's Keyshawn? So it might be some bias there. But I sent out a video production unit out here to the 4-9 um, precinct so we could do a little video on the relationship between the community affairs and the NCOs. Um, I want, you know, the community affairs officers, as you know, um, I did community affairs back, you know, 13 years ago, is the same community affairs officers in many commands. They stay on a long time and they have, they have experience, they have knowledge, they know the community. And um, I want them to partner up with the newly assigned NCOs and kind of, you know, guide them, introduce them to the community, have them understand what, you know, the community relationship is all about. And um, I'm hoping, you know, they're going to show me that video soon. I know they recorded sometime this week, so I'm looking forward, looking forward to that video. So um, I know there's good work going to be coming out of here. Um, in closing, let's continue to nurture our partnership and fortify tonight's theme of bridging the gap between cops, clerk, community, and clergy. It is thanks to this partnership and the hard work of the men and women of the NYPD that we have watched crime plunge to a level not seen since the 1950s. This is incredible work. In 1990, when I became a police officer, there were 2,245 murders. Wow. Last year, we ended with less than 300. Wow. But somebody was there. And Chief McEwen did not, he was very humble when he was up here, but the Bronx did an incredible job right here in the backyard. And last year, they ended with 72 um, compared to 98 the year before. That is incredible work here in the Bronx. Thanks to, you know, Captain Alps here, the, you know, here, um, thank you, and, you know, unbelievable work by the, um, by the officers here in the Bronx. I'm so proud. But, you know, as we always say, you know, any murder is one too many, but this is incredible done here by the officers of the Bronx, led by the Borough Command Assistant Chief Larry McEwnan and your precinct commander, Captain Tommy Alps. There is no denying that this is nothing other than cops, community, and clergy working together to underscore the ideals of the department neighborhood policing philosophy. As you can see, it's an exciting time in our city, and I'm challenging each and every one of you to be involved with your community and encourage others in your neighborhood that aren't involved to get involved. I thank you for the opportunity to speak here again. And where's Pastor Gooden? You heard me before. Thank you for giving me this mic again. I don't know how you trusted me to have it again. But I think I, I learned a little bit. I said I wrote some notes down. I said, so I didn't forget. I wanted to make sure. But thank you again. It's unbelievable. Thank you for the work you guys do. And I look forward now in my new position to work citywide. So not only the Bronx, you could expand to other boroughs. I know they want you here, but expand. And um, thank you again for the work you do. Thank Thank you to my officers. Thank you. Hey, she's come a long way in 13 years, huh? <laughs>
Amen. While others in our country are trying to build walls, tonight, this is the epitome of tearing walls down, coming together. So let's give yourselves a hand clap tonight. I want to go, and I'm going to ask our executive board if they will come up with me now. We have our special honorees, and then we want to do our community. We're just about finished tonight. But we want to first present our honorees, and these are people that have gone above and beyond to serve not only in the priests and not only to help our clergy, but also in this community. First, I'm going to ask tonight, Evangelist Donna Sled, she's not here, but I'm going to ask Sister Patricia Hamilton if she will come up and receive this on her behalf tonight. Evangelist Sledge was one, she was our social media person and she also still to this day still sends out the e-blast to send the communication to our clergy. Come here, come over here, Sister Hamilton. And Sister Hamilton's a good friend. And so tonight, she could not be with us tonight, but certainly we want to present this to Evangelist Donna Sledge for the job that she does. Amen. You see our Facebook page. She's the one that initiated that. And uh, we're certainly grateful for her and for the work that she has done. So on behalf of Evangelist Donna Sledge, tonight Sister Patricia Hamilton is going to receive this award on her behalf. For Sister Sledge, I would like to say thank you very much because I know if she was here, she would do the same thing. God bless you and thank you so much. I honor you. She's also our church funeral director, too. She wanted me to put the plug in, but uh, tonight we speak life. <laughs> tonight we speak life. I got a funeral in the morning, Pat, but tonight we speak in life. Next is one of, he's the vice president of our community council, but this young man is such a humble man that he's the one that sends out emails and e-blasts to whatever event, whether it's SUV, whether it's community, whether it's the Bronx Borough president, and he does a terrific job. As I said, he's one of the most humblest men that I know. And uh, I'm gonna ask Silvio Mazzella to come at this time. Sylvia said, I don't want to receive this, Pastor. Give it to somebody else. But I said, no. Whenever, I don't even know how he does it. I don't even know how he gets the uh, communique. But you'll see it all over. And he puts it on his 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 uh, Facebook page, his email, and sends out all the notifications. Sylvia, we thank you for a job well done that you do. I want to thank the Clergy Council and the NYPD. And uh, I accept this humbly, by the way, on behalf of the community and all those who volunteer. And uh, I can only say, yours are all blessings to us. And I love this receive. I think that's fantastic. We really need to promote that. So God bless, and to God be the glory for that. Hallelujah. Next is a young man that does a lot for this community. He's one that don't have to be asked to do something. During the last summer, he was out and he initiated something where they was on the street corners giving out hot meals. And he's one that's bridging the Muslim community together with our community. He's the president of the Muslim and Immigration Coalition, also the founder of the Bronx Community Council and the vice chair of the Muslim Day Parade. Let's give a great God bless you to Mr. Shabir Go. Where's Shabir? Yeah. This man does it all. He, I, and I have to add, he also donated $1,000 to our scholarship for our clergy council. Shabir, we love you, man. Thank you, Clergy Council. Really appreciate my respected officials, my respected officers, 49 precinct, 49 Clergy Councils, and my beloved family. Thank you all. May God bless you all. This I am rece receiving behalf of you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And last but not least, and I think there's some, might be some certificates, I believe, from uh, our controller, Scott String. I don't see Marisol. I think she left, but uh, I think they was also given. And Senator Klein also is going to have, he could not be here, but he said he's going to uh, also have uh, certificates. But I'm grateful tonight for this young man who's, I've seen him grow. I've seen him sing. Y'all, now you talk about singing. Ramon, you got to hear this brother sing. You got to hear this brother. I hope you sing a little bit of um, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jay. But he has the perfect name, too. Jay. Oh. <laughs> and he has been one that I've seen this council grow. He had been a great part, him and his partner, Dave Lepore. But Jay had been one that had been by our side from day one. Whenever we need somebody, and Jay said from day one that you can call him anytime. And it's not been one time that I can say that I have not called this young man and he have not responded to my call and to our council call to be there for us. I'm just grateful to have this young man who knows the Lord. And I'm just grateful to have him that stands by our side here in the 49th Precinct, Detective Jay Sturdivant. If, if, if y'all sing, 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 Jay, I think sing you might sing Jay. it Sing, Jay! Sing, <laughs> Jay! Uh-oh. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for this wonderful honor. I'm very appreciative for this community. I've been doing this for so many years, and I just want to acknowledge my partner, Dave. We're <laughs> Thank you, Dave, for dealing with my craziness. Thank you, Dave, for dealing with my, I can't do this anymore, I'm tired. <laughs> but he keeps me motivated. Congratulations, Chief Hoffman. Thank you for coming. Thank you, for coming. Thank you um, Chief McKeown, for coming as well. But I want to give a special shout out and a thank you to my commanding officer, Captain Ops. <laughs> him and I came on together. Him and I came on together in 2000, and uh, we talk about how the job used to be. And the job was a little bit different, and I was expressing that to Chief Hoffman earlier, that you weren't, you know, it wasn't really the thing to sit on a bench, because I worked in housing. I grew up in housing. So I, I was in my home. So I worked in housing and I used to sit on the bench with elderly, the elderly ladies on the bench and just chat with them. And I would be a little nervous to see like, you know, the, my supervisor come by, so I would jump up and I'm like, oh, I can't sit on the bench. But all I was doing was being who I was, which was, you know, a police officer, but a community oriented police officer. So I love the fact that Chief Hoffman said that this is a new lifestyle and I'm gonna continue this lifestyle until I can't do it anymore. So thank you so much. Sing Jay, sing Jay. Jesus loves me. Oh yes he does. That's it. I don't know if he was nervous or he just forgot the words to Jesus love you. <laughs> I think he forgot the words. <laughs> Chief Hoffman, I'm so grateful for you to be with us tonight. When I called as she said 13 years ago, we met in, at the borough and, and uh, certainly her service to see her grow through the ranks. It's amazing to see how folk have grown through the ranks, amen, of NYPD and folk that we was younger, amen. I used to have a little more hair <laughs> and it was black at one time too. <laughs> but now to see how God has elevated her in, and I call the police department ministry because they're servants. 
And so tonight we want to present on behalf of our clergy council. Yeah. I'm going to ask Reverend Coleman to present that. Aww. We want to present that to our chief. Yeah. A dozen roses. And again, I want to thank our chief for being here, and certainly to our honorable Darcel Clark for being here. You want to say something, chief? Come on. Yeah. And uh, all of our, our captain again, and uh, our commissioner Garcia, Joe Ramos, our Vanessa, our councilwoman. She, I Lord knows, she's everywhere, and we're certainly grateful for. Her. Come on, chief. Just quick. I have to first of all publicly welcome Chief Hoffman back here. I've known. Chief Hoffman, we worked, we had the pleasure of working together here in the Bronx. She was one of the commanding officers here. So when I lost her to risk management, I was devastated because you hate to lose a great commanding officer and, and we got along very well. Um, and she did an unbelievably great job in the 52nd Precinct. So when, you, when I hear that you, first of all, I wanted you to come back to the Bronx too. Trust me, the feeling was mutual, but when I heard you got community affairs, I couldn't be more happy and more proud because the city is in good hands because I know what she's capable of. She's an extraordinary executive and she's going to do great things in that bureau for this city. So, again, I'm happy for you. I miss you. And I'm happy for you. Thank you, Chief. And I must say, we do have, actually, we do have the certificates here. So I'm asking them to come back. Jay, we got a certificate from our public advocate who could not be here tonight, Letitia James, and from our city controller, Scott Stringer. All right, Silvio. This is from our public advocate, Letitia James and Scott Stringer. And, oh, Jay. Jay Sturt, Jay, I think I gave you the wrong ones. Now you gotta sing again. <laughs> Shabir, Shabir, go. Where's Shabir? Okay, all right. And Sister Ham Hamilton, you can take Evangelist Sledge. All right, that's from the public advocate and from our controller Scott Stringer. All right. And Sister Hamilton, can you just pass that to her? That's for Evangelist Sledge. Now we just wanted. One of the things, and I want to thank God for Grace. Grace, you know, last year we was going to do this, and I said we'll do this this year, but going forward, every year we want to honor one of our persons from our clergy, one from law enforcement, one that does community service. And Grace, from last year, this is something that we was trying to do is to honor our community because our community works with us tremendously. And so tonight, as I call out the names, uh, we're just going to give the certificates of community service to our community groups. We're going to start first with the Bronx Jewish Community Council. Is Larry? Larry, was that your group? Or no, that no, Edith? no. That's Edith. That's, that's Edith. Okay, Edith, Edith is not here tonight. No, but... Uh, you want to take it on her behalf? Yes, yeah, she's he's PPA, PPNA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Larry. The North, here, yeah, y'all can present these. I'm going to let y'all hand them out. The Northeast Bronx, Ralph, Rafi, Rafael, he's not here tonight. No. Okay. The Allerton Homeowners Association. Sal. Sal. Come on. I'm going to put my paper down so. They can't see. Yeah, Sal Russo. Right? Did I say that now? Or Russell? Russo. 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 All right, come on. Give him a hand clap. Amen. He's our community group. East Chester Gardens tenant, Keith Ramsey. Is Keith here? Yes, Keith Ramsey. Thank you, Keith. Keith allows us to go and do prayer in East Chester Gardens. We do a walk every year. Parkside Houses Residence Council, Arlene Drayton is here tonight. Allerton Coops Tenants Association. Janice. That's Miss Janice Walcott. Janice. Janice is a partial member of Fellowship Tabernacle. 
We love her. She's such a great help. Joe Thompson, the 49th Precinct Community Council. Can I say a few words? No. <laughs> no. Only if you only if you sing, Joe. If you do, I'm gonna tell a story about your lost car. <laughs> can I tell it, Joe? Joe, can I tell it, Joe? No. All right. Joe came and spoke one time for our Black History and Miracle Revival Temple. <laughs> Chief Hoffman, for two hours, two hours, we was looking for his car. Oh, he no. thought his car was stolen in front of Miracle Revival. He went to the 44th priest and made a report. He realized the next day he had parked around the corner. <laughs> So every time I ask her, do you remember where you park your car tonight, Joe? <laughs> I love Joe. Thank you, Joe. Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. <laughs> Bernadette? Well, Bernadette couldn't come. Bernadette Ferrara. No. no I'm Joanne. Jo oh, Joanne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I Bern got a sister named Joanne. <laughs> Good day. Thank you so much. Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association. Larry. Larry, Larry. yes, Larry. Larry's a sip on behalf of Edith Blitzer. And I believe Edith is having a function also tonight, so that's the reason she could not be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The Morris Park Community Association. Was that? Oh, Al didn't. Oh, Sylvia. Come on, Sylvia. Al, Al was supposed to come. The Kruger Mace Block Association. Oh, that's Grace. Didn't she sing? Didn't she sing beautiful tonight? That's one. The Bronx Park East Community Association. Oh, no wonder, no wonder you were saying let's honor all the community groups. I'm just, I'm just making it up for them. Well, My good friend, Jean DeFrancis, the Allerton International Merchants Association. And I believe, come on, Veron. Veron's the newly elected president. And she's a part of our clergy council, but Jean has done a tremendous job all these years, and certainly now he... Passes the reins off to Veron. Thank you, Jean. Jean, you want to have words? Because I know Jean is such a tremendous part of our neighborhood. Uh, as the outgoing uh, president of the Allerton Merchants Association, I'll still be here with the new title founder. But all I really want to say is uh, mm. welcome to Allerton. <laughs> it's uh, so beautiful to have all these VIPs here breaking bread in our, in our town. For those that are Allertonians, fellow Allertonians, we know what we've been through. Um, <laughs> And so we, we sincerely want to thank our police department, our clergy, because our success these past couple of years in this community has been our communication. And we have to keep going, talk to each other, reach out, get out of our homes, meet our neighbors, and together we have to fight this opioid crisis and epidemic that's tearing up our nation, not just our, our community. So we all have to do that together. We're one tribe, we're Bronxites, so let's stick together. Thank you. And last but not least, the Allerton Barnes Block yeah. Association. Grace, is that you again? <laughs> tonight again, on behalf of our executive board, we thank you for being here tonight. We thank you for participating with us. And we thank you again for the three C's, our clergy, Wait, our the community, and our cops all coming together. Give your own selves a hand clap tonight. Back into the hands of our MC. Bishop Reed, tremendous job tonight, Bishop. Thank you so much to our executive committee. We thank God for them, and it is well deserved that you give them one more round of applause for the great work of President, of Vice President, and all the leadership. These men are the driving force behind what we do here tonight. 
God bless you and we thank you. One final thing I would like to do is to ask you to pray for them, pray for us, pray for the work that we're doing. And then it's my profound joy to ask our beloved apostle to come and he will grace us with that closing benediction. Is that right? right. Just before apostle come and we're gonna pray for our police officers and our community and our clergy tonight. I'm gonna to ask Irene Estrada. She's one of our community leaders. She's back with our clergy council. She's a good friend of Chief Hoffman, been knowing her down through the years. She's gonna take about 30 seconds. She need to say something to Chief. Guys, when Nilda came to the 49th precinct, I was running Explore for Grants and I had my own children's organization called the Mini Olympics. Out of the Mini Olympics is the fruit of the hand of great leaders, great responsible captains and great responsible teachers. It takes all of us to make our communities. She is an Allerton. She came from Allerton Avenue from Wallace and Arnold Avenue. She joined the Mini Olympics. She made the, Olymp the Mini Olympics shine, which my granddaughter was only three or four years old. Now Amber is following her. She's at the academy. Amber's mother, Erica, became a police officer for the 42nd Precinct. My daughter, Amber, er Daisy, is the ECT for the police department. My son-in-law's officer, Keith, worked with you at the 5-2. And the story goes on, but out of your hand, you know, I know people by the fruit of your hand. The people that come out of your hands, your children, your grandchildren, your community, that's the purpose that we're driven by God. So, Nilda, I congratulate you because, because of you, all of my children are serving Christ through the ministry of being a police officer, number one. Number two, all the kids in the Explore program, 99% of them became police officers. I, me as an advocate for, I was sent by, remember Deputy um, Shay? You remember Shay? Yeah. He sent me, because I was an activist, not anti-police, but because I'm an activist, he sent me to the police academy for the civilians police academy, so I had to go there too. <laughs> so, uh, so the whole family, and the reason I, I, I had to share with Pastor Gooding to let you know, is that we need to take a look at the fruit of our hands. Learn to see what God is 